<laughs> Welcome to the six-part linear series on how I ended up on the career path I'm on today. I'm sure other stories will pop up here and there between these installments, but keep in mind, these ones are in order. Ending with the fully blown animated short. They're all individual stories, but I just like how nicely the events go together. So without further ado, let's get started on how Baby Ray was so traumatized by her favorite children's website, she was led down the path where she would discover art. Howdy hey, I'm the aforementioned Ray, and there are two things we need to establish right off the bat. The first is that I've always had an irrational fear of the dark. I deal with it much better now than I did then, but I definitely haven't grown out of it. As a kid, it was pretty debilitating. I couldn't bring myself to move much when the sun set, and dark hallways and windows looking out into the night always sent me into a panic. I couldn't do things that were loud like vacuum or take a shower because I needed to both stay hidden and be able to hear if something was coming for me. Like, I was always convinced that something was lurking in the shadows waiting for me, and my imagination was unforgiving. Now, as an adult, I can move around the house and be alone when it gets dark, but it still gets my heart rate up. My friends all keep their shower curtains open and their closets closed when I come over because they know about my condition. And once it gets dark, it becomes a strictly no-horror-anything zone because I'll be paranoid for the rest of the night. Which sucks because I actually love playing with horror as a genre, but we'll get back to that later. Second thing to know is I really liked digital pet games. I was maybe 10 years old and my two best friends at the time lived just a bike right away. One introduced me to Neopets and the other one introduced me to Webkins. Both of these websites had the same general premise. You made an account in the website, adopted your digital pets, you played games to net coin, you could dress them up, feed them, had daily tasks to encourage you to log in, all that sort of pseudo-responsibility stuff. Neopets had physical merchandise, like stuffed animals, because that's just good business. But physical toys were totally optional. For Webkins, however, you needed to buy an $11 stuffed animal, redeem the code on your account, and each pet was good for one year's worth of a membership. Apparently nowadays you could just sign up for free, there's no time limit. Found this juicy tidbit out while I was rushing up on my facts for this video, and, and like, a hot take? My knee-jerk reaction to this news was gobsmacked and primal rage. Because how dare you make changes to my nostalgia-based interests? But whatever. Anyway, you were incentivized to have a bunch of pets. I fell for the trap. My first and favorite pet was a Cocker Spaniel. I named her Katrina, and I nicknamed her Cat. Ha. Ha 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 ha. And I really need to articulate how much I loved these sites and these toys. Every day before and after school, I'd immediately log into them and do all my daily tasks. I earned money by bringing home my spelling homework and writing out all my vocabulary words like 25 times each. And I got a quarter each time. So I'd sit down and write out 1,100 words to get enough quarters to go buy another pet from Hallmark. I would pack all my stuffed animals into pillowcases and haul them on my bike to one of my friend's houses to play with them. They all had names and personalities and relationships. Like, this was full-blown roleplay. Really, this is where I found my creative interest in creating characters and stories. Some of the very first characters I ever made were Neopets that I've since adapted and I still use to this day. We want time. But as much as I loved them both, I had such a ridiculous bias for Webkins that it was... I, uh... Well... Ridiculous. <laughs> Running out of adjectives. The point is, I'm an extremely all-or-nothing person, and I was all in on Webkins. This was my heart and soul. I was a cog in their corporate pay-to-play gimmick, and I fucking loved it. So what on earth on this children's website for actual babies could have possibly traumatized me? Some fucking asshole. One morning I went to log in and there's some sort of news bulletin on the main page telling parents not to worry. Don't worry about what? I'm an academic, I have to investigate. Upon clicking the link, I was greeted with a super vague announcement that said, You may have heard the rumors, but we assure you that you and your kids are safe. Webkin strives to be a child-friendly platform and will only ever be that. Well, that's vague as shit! All it did was make me curious, what the fuck is up, Google? This was one of the first moments in my life that I can look back and realize, oh, this is why my parents were so worried about me on the internet. What I found was a few different sources talking about how they, or someone they knew, witnessed their Webkins being murdered right before their eyes. Dubbed the Webkins Killer. Hindsight is twenty twenty. I recognize now that I was reading an awful creepypasta. As a child, though, 
I thought I was reading straight facts. The culprits of this Webkin's killer rumor varied from deranged pets to the head of the adoption center, Miss Birdie, and her cohort, Dr. Quack. Stuff like when you went to register a new pet, there was a percent chance that Miss Birdie would pull them behind the table and murder them before the adoption was final. Or if you took your sick pet to Dr. Quack and messed with his office, he'd just fucking lose it and pull the curtain and unleash his medical instruments of torture on your poor baby. Some rumors said not to open random mail or presents because Miss Birdie would pop out with a knife and unleash a murderous rampage. I started out this day wanting to play my cheerful innocent little pet game and now I was terrified. Baby Ray books it to her mom's office begging for help. And she was well used to the song and dance of calming down my daughter who's afraid of her own shadow. And tired of it. She, like any other adult or individual with more than, say, two brain cells, only needed to look up the rumors for two seconds to know how obviously fake it was. Webkins itself said it was fake. The website my mom used called Snope said it was fake. I got the motherly seal of approval to continue playing the game safely. It's just a rumor, Reagan. There's nothing to worry about. Go have fun. This put me in such a situation. I wanted to play Webkins so bad. I wanted my mom to think I wasn't afraid. But I was hopeless. I'm a paranoid little ba baby. I did play again, but I avoided any location in the game where Miss Birdie could be found just to play it safe. I made my mom register any new pets I brought home, and I hid behind her desk so Birdie wouldn't see me. If a pet got sick, that sucked. Booted them and switched to a new maid. What's healthcare really worth if you're dead, am I right? I still wanted nothing more than to play this game, but every single time, without fail, logging in made me shake and my heart race. The worst part, though, is how I carried the fear of a killer in Webkins through my daily life. I had a genuine fear. A genuine fear that Miss Birdie would drag herself out of the computer screen and hunt me down because of what I knew. At night, I'd have all my stuffed animals set up to protect me, and I'd press into the corner of my bed, and I'd cower and watch my computer like a hawk until I finally fell asleep. I'm pretty sure I even started covering up the screen with a blanket at night, as if that would help at all. And for some reason, Miss Birdie was the only one I was afraid of? I wasn't concerned with random crazed pets jumping onto or out of my screen, no, no. And even though I avoided him to be safe, I wasn't even scared of Dr. Quack that much. Like, this face doesn't bother me, pudgy twink. I could take you. It's whatever, man. This face strikes fear into the soul. Like, who approved this? Even without a killer rumor, it's terrifying. I couldn't articulate this as a kid, but I'm an artist now. The biggest contributions to how unsettling she is is the lack of eyebrows paired with the lack of any hood and prominent eyelashes. It gives the appearance that her eyes are always wide open, which is a common trope for crazy, unstable killer characters. Additionally, her hair having no details looks very ambiguous, so for a hot minute your mind questions what's on her head, which leads to being uneasy, and finally, this hairline starts at the very top of her head. Very atypical trait. This isn't an instance of Uncanny Valley, but it emulates a lot of the same feelings of something's off here. And all this backs up my hypothesis that putting this in a child's game was stupid and dumb. <coughs> I continued struggling to breathe when I played. I had a hard time sleeping. I was having nightmares where Birdie came for me. And it sucked! I was exhausted! It really sucked that something I loved so much was causing me so much distress fried my nerves so goddamn much because I was too young to get over a stupid, obviously fake rumor. It was time I moved on. It's a little ironic because when I look into the situation now, a different theory is that Neopets was behind the Webkin's killer, hacking the website to scare kids into their platform instead. I guess cheaters always win because that's exactly what I did. I just slowly migrated over to playing Neopets instead. For real though, this sounds like a real bummer and I feel really bad for Baby Ray, but ultimately, things worked out for the better. For the record, I love watching horror movies and listening to creepypastas now. At a certain point, I just took the initiative to start exposing myself as a sort of self-prescribed treatment. And for the most part, I've got a really good hang of my fears and phobias now. I'm developing a whole series about monsters for fuck's sake. I think I'm doing pretty good. And the switch from Webkins to Neopets was really good for me too. Neopets pushed me so much more creatively. It was ultimately what made me begin drawing, which you'll see in the next part, but here's a little spicy sneak peek. Beauty contest, huh? You just have to draw to do that? 
That sounds super easy. It's not easy. But that's another story. The real question until then is, am I still afraid of the stupid creepypasta around this game? Guess it'll take just a little more exposure therapy to find out. Hello there. Oh. I'm Miss Birdie. I run the adoption. Dude, they changed Miss Birdie's voice. She had a she had a worse okay, voice. Okay, so they've had her before. No, Miss Birdie has always been the she's always been the adoption center lady, but she had a deep voice. Like she kind of reminded me of Miss D. She goes, "Hello and welcome to Webkids." <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got this. Riveting. I know, right? Just the best of content. You guys want to stop insulting my YouTube career? I'm working really hard. We we played for too long to add it to this video, so it's just going to be on its own. Stay tuned for the rest of that video in part two of six of my artsy path. Before I go, obligatory self-promo. If you want to keep up to date with all my video and comic uploads, join my Discord. We'll be hosting a collaborative event really soon. And if you're interested in supporting me and my channel, I just launched some very new merch, like a pin, your very own I Hate Money mug, and a faux chest window to let the world know where pens are meant to be held. Or you can check out my Patreon, where for $2 a month I post my work in progress videos, or my final videos early, or I do requests when I have the time, or for $10 a month you get all the previous, plus I'll read your name at the end of my videos just like this. Thank you so much to Angel Hickman, Stephen Williams, aka Bruna Cal, Dexter Koch, Chris Aru, Omar Reyes, The Spice King, Aiden Strong, Daniel Baton, Mr. Angry Fat Man, Firework Cat 25, Ivy Rosie, Broxus Powers, Inagami Black, Distorter, Blah Blah Watermelon, Nightmage 14, Jeff Yeehaw, Ariel Descalgo, Witchy Toby, Kutera, Zelfus, Shay Thorne, Cater, Alex, Ryan Reeves, Sinister Stephanie, Ellie Bexel, Kojin Takina, Blade the Wolf Artist, Universe Noodle Soup, Cheerless, Maxine Luhan, Key the Queen, Jacob Denham, Risk, Ethan Gardner, Fallen Zippo, Hubert Deschex, Late X, Double Anon, John Minaj, Chosen Mode 18, Stupid Genius, Johnny, Thorn Hearted, Housewake, Arctic Century, Mirror Mask, Raphael Dazapa, Sylvia Dream, Chiler B, Basket Case, Juno Orleans, Tosin, Dude News, Emulate, Cheese Brown, SS, Ignan Nair, Decaf Hero, Carter, Chris Sigma, Sweet S, Sweets Fox, Hat Sushiba, Jeremy Reeder, Shell, Blue Turtle Bug, Failing, Zealous Tokamoto, Infrosa, Red Chibi, Antiqua, Nemo Cost, Dust Munchies, Baked Potatoes, Slayed, Identities, Fire Mega Man Zero, Ellie Cat, Right Two, Nifty, Arwin, Riley Gas, Russell the Jimmy's, Pebble the One, The Woo, Fragment That Curse, Oh Woe, Salmon and Soup, Our Brightest Stars, Dosko, Lapith, Ab, Lachel, Nikos, William Waller, Richard Rivera, Echo Syndicate, Skull Daggery, Michael, Caleb Whitman, Emma Joy, Wolf Roll 4535 Thank you guys so much. I couldn't do it without you. Have a great day. Bye.